Oh, welcome to another Enough Already podcast. My name is Fingers Malloy. She's Tracy L. Connors. You okay, Tracy? How you doing? I'm, I'm fine, just fine. Sipping my cold brew. Oh. It's morning, that's what we do. I have a Mountain Dew. Oh, because you couldn't bring it upon yourself to prepare the cold brew. Well, you know, it's a 12-hour process. <laughs> Who has the time? Yes, 11 hours and 58 minutes of that are just sitting and waiting. <laughs> but who has the time? Apparently not you. No. Oh. Well, I don't know how we're going to do things today because uh, we're recording this at 10.30 in the morning on a Wednesday. And uh, according to the the uh, the clock here, uh, they've got a... Uh, <laughs> um, a countdown? A countdown clock on uh, Fox News, 28 minutes and 30 seconds until the Donald Trump press conference. Okay. So we figured we would record a little bit here and then play it by ear, right? We may end it. We may continue <laughs> after the news conference. We don't know when he's going to get up there. You know, he may he may pull a Barack Obama and say he's going to be there at 11 a.m. but not show up till 1.00. Could happen. You never know. I have a feeling he's going to be on time today, though, because I think he's pretty pissed off. Yeah. And for good reason. Want to start with that? Sure. (laughs) So, apparently a known germaphobe, Donald Trump, allegedly uh, got some hookers Mm -hmm. in uh, in Moscow. Moscow. Mm-hmm. At a Ritz Carlton and had them pee all over each other in a bed that uh, was once shared by Barack Obama and uh, allegedly Michelle Obama. That's a, that's what we're supposed to swallow, and the Russians have been holding on to this for a few years. Yes, yes. Revenge is a dish best served yellow. <laughs> but from what I understand, the dude doesn't even like shaking hands with people. <laughs> right? Stop being rational about oh. this. You're supposed to just accept this supposed intelligence memo that's been floating around behind the scenes and every other news source had a chance to look at it and thought, huh, this doesn't seem realistic at all. Let's not run with it until we can verify things. I mean, I saw even David Korn, you know, that toothless guy or toothless. I think it's toothless. Yeah. Yeah, He's one of those people that when he talks, you can't see his teeth and that always drives me nuts. Um the little scumbag that runs Mother Jones even has tweeted that he had seen it and couldn't substantiate any of the claims, so decided to not run with it. But I guess BuzzFeed didn't have those problems, and I think CNN actually wrote about it first. I've been trying to piece this all together, what order it is, but BuzzFeed dropped the dossier, because that's what they say when they want you to think something's important right. and real. <laughs> this whole dossier of information. Which, if anybody's ever read intelligence reports, I assume the memos are similar. They look nothing like this. Nothing. Oh, stop. Stop. <laughs> Clearly, this is this is Russian intelligence. So you're not familiar with the old KGB style or whatever they call it now. Uh, the FSB. The FSB. Their style is completely different. That looks exactly like an FSB report translated into English. Oh, okay. Good to know. That's what I'm told. But uh, even NBC... Wouldn't run this. And NBC, NBC, if you are uh, a youngin, you can go back to the 90s when uh, NBC put devices underneath GM SUVs that would make them, uh, basically set them on fire. And then <laughs> say, they, they claimed that uh, these were death traps. <laughs> GM, it didn't take much for GM to uh, prove that NBC, they, they were blowing up their cars and saying it was GM's fault. Even NBC looked at this report and was like, eh, yeah, you know, nah. Yeah. Huh. Not gonna go, well, we're not going to run with it. Uh, the latest is that, it, according to the Daily Mail this morning, John McCain <laughs> is the one that got a hold of this dossier. And... He wanted to see if Comey could verify the claims made therein. I couldn't put it down, my friends. Yes. 
I believe all this stuff. It, and I had forgotten, and this mail po- article points out that McCain had retracted his support for Trump in October. Yes. Supposedly that was uh, a report came out too that that one of Trump's biggest regrets was endorsing McCain. Understandably so. So, no, well, you're right. I for, I forgot had forgotten about that too, but um, maybe he had regrets over endorsing McCain because he found out about all of this because uh, according to sources. <laughs> From somewhere, I would, I did Buzz? Who was reporting now that uh, Trump was briefed on this? Because Kellyanne Conway was on um, the Seth Meyers show last night and claims that he was not briefed on any of this. Yeah, I had read those claims in a couple different places that this was part of the intelligence reports that Obama and Trump were on the receiving end of last week. That there were two pages of these reports dedicated to this. Mm-hmm. And I mean, if you feel like wading into it, you get through the first page where they also kind of give you an overview of the intelligence that the Russians had gotten on Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. This should have been a red flag as well. Nothing nefarious going on with her. (laughs) They just have some recorded conversations. For the record, I wouldn't believe that Hillary Clinton hired a couple hookers to pee on each other at the uh, Moscow Ritz uh, Carlton either. So just for the record... I have an easier time believing she would do that than he would do that. (laughs) But I have a feeling she was over there cutting all kinds of deals. I mean, how else do they end up with the uranium, the United States uranium? Hooker urine? Did they call it Operation Hooker Urine to get the uranium from Hillary Clinton? Do we know this? They're they're usually more clever about operational names than that. I don't know about the Russians. I know that we are. Our intelligence services are much better at. Mm. Like when they dosed, uh, when they were trying to figure out what to do with LSD... One of the things that they did, which was called, I believe, Project Midnight Climax, <laughs> yeah. was uh, dosing guys that were going to houses of ill repute because they figured these guys aren't going to tattle. They're going <laughs> to hookers. So let's just <laughs> dose them and see what happens. So wouldn't that be a fun surprise? Uh, That's a pretty good name for a project. Yeah. I think. Ever Super do the fun. LSD? Tracy? No. Cameras? No. Nope. Mm. No confession here. I've, I've never done LSD either. Ah, no interest. No, I, I had friends that would do it. And when they would explain their high to me, I was like, why would you want to do that? I mean, yeah, I was always bothered by the fact that you're stuck in that thing, like yeah. that place, whatever, for hours. Yeah. And if it goes bad, there's no getting out. And, and you're not capable of even convincing yourself that will end. So, no, thank you. You guys can tell me about it. <laughs> Actually, I did try it once. <laughs> oh. And you know what ended up happening? My, my high, my uh, Your hallucination, trip? my trip involved two hookers peeing on each other in a Russian hotel room. The Ritz in Moscow? I yeah. yeah. Actually, it was a Motel 6, but, oh. you know. I wish I knew how to say six in Russian. <laughs> I'll work on that. Well, we're all going to learn because we're all going to be speaking Russian soon. That's true. But uh, no, he's going to be on here at 11 a.m. Eastern. And I wish I had a way for us to be able to do a Mystery Science 3000 version of the Trump press conference. But um, alas, I can't put the <laughs> audio in to this podcast live. I don't have that. We have a low budget here at the mm. Enough Already podcast. But mm-hmm. um, low is spelled N O in this case. <laughs> so he'll be on at eleven. That has been the big story over the past day. All except for Obama's see you later bye speech. <sighs> Did you catch any of that? I caught a little bit of it. I couldn't take much, but I figured I have to put myself through some of this torture for y'all's benefit. Now I I didn't see any of it, but apparently well, he you know I, I I did see someone there was a. A meme floating around uh, pictures of Reagan, Clinton, and Bush doing their farewell addresses. Um, mm-hmm. And they did it from the, the, the Oval, Oval Office. And, of course, from what I saw last night, he did it in front of 15,000 people or something. Yeah, it was huge. And his voice was echoing. <laughs> like the voice of God? 
Pretty much. I mean, that that's a little bit unnecessary in this day and age. So I, I wonder if they did that for effect. Mm. So how many times do we see Trump go to stadiums and big things and you don't hear the echo, echo, echo. But maybe that's just a natural thing that happens to his voice because he is so godlike. But my favorite part of the 10 minutes that I was able to endure was he goes off on this lofty. If you would have if we would have told you that we were going to do the X, Y, Z, which started with uh, we're going to reverse the Great Recession. Laugh line for me. <laughs> Save the auto industry. Another one. Uh, we're going to add a new chapter to our story with Cuba as if chapters wouldn't have been written in the story <laughs> i mean it's so absurd <laughs> um shut down iran's nuke program without firing a shot okay it only cost you how many billions of dollars in cash on a pallet dropped in the middle of the night and uh we still don't know what the terms of this are and the it, iranians still haven't signed the agreement i believe it's a good deal though tracy just gotta trust it, yeah one shot, 160 billion, whatever. Anyway, um, oh, this is my favorite. This is he always takes credit for this and had absolutely nothing to do with it. We would that we would win marriage equality. <laughs> and then so he caps this all off, you know, all these wonderful accomplishments that if they would have told us in the beginning, we would have said to them, you would have told us we set our sights too high. <laughs> right. OK, at this point, a heckler yells. And I went back and listened to it again. And I think I might, I might be wish casting on this, but I'm fairly certain this gentleman yelled, no one believes you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, oh, Joe Wilson, someone let that guy in there. <laughs> I mean, he could make a living off of that. I believe he's no longer in Congress, but. Oh, wow. The you lie me. guy. Yeah. He's back to shout, no one believes you. <laughs> I, I believe he also uh, threw in there that uh, health care costs have slowed to a, uh, the, its lowest increases in American history. Of course. Mind and you, I love when at they one throw point in... you could pay your doctor with a fucking chicken. <laughs> Well, see, they always leave off the parenthetical recorded when they talk about history. <laughs> it goes the same for the climate guys when they're like, it's the hottest year on record. And they don't tell you historical record, which started in the late 1800s mm -hmm. as far as its temperature goes. But, yeah, it's like we didn't have health care prior to World War II, I don't believe. We didn't have this institutionalized everybody has to have health insurance until they put wage caps on industry and said you can't pay people more than X. So they came up with other ways to entice workers to come join their firms. You know and who was one of the first to throw that perk in and basically help ruin the <laughs> healthcare industry? <laughs> General Motors. No. Yeah. No, Amazing. you're yeah, you're right. They had the uh the wage caps, so you had to throw in other perks for your employees health insurance and then the government stepped in and made things 10 times worse of course it's what they do but what i find fascinating is now you're you're seeing an argument among republicans as to how they're going to dismantle this monster called obamacare and it was interesting i believe you brought it up to me the other night did tucker carlson have senator paul on his show Correct. Last Friday evening, I believe it was. Can you kind of his summarize last... their conversation? Because I found it fascinating. Yeah. So he has Rand Paul on and Rand had been vocally saying and, and the way this was couched in the media, I believe, was that Rand Paul is against repeal. That he's trying to put the brakes on it. And, and Rand came on to say, uh, no, I'm saying that we need to do repeal and replace at the same time. But he was holding up a current the current budget bill they're negotiating. He said he wasn't going to sign off on it because it only includes repeal. And it also blows a hole in the budget again. So his point was, this is ridiculous. I'm not signing on to a budget that's going to add more to the deficit. Right. Why are we doing this? We control the budget now. It's time to be fiscally responsible. And... Uh, then Tucker started talking to him about the repeal aspects and the replacement aspects. And he 
Rand is supposed to be coming out with his replacement bill this week. But, I mean, Tucker turned it on him and, and said exactly what we're all thinking. Like, what the hell have you guys been doing for the last seven years that you haven't just settled on one bill that we can just drop on the desk day one? We can vote on it before Trump even takes office and get it done. Yeah. And Rand was like, well, there are a bunch of different bills. And Tucker's like, this is this is insane. Your party has been running on this. We're going to repeal it or replace it for three cycles now. Two yeah. congressional, one president. No, I guess two, four. Two congressional, two presidential. Mm -hmm. Where the hell is the plan? That's a good damn question. Well, and I think what you're seeing is what we thought we'd see. You have a plan by fiscally responsible Republicans, and then you mm -hmm. have a plan from Republican le leadership. Yes. And uh, you saw that with the but I believe they actually voted on that budget bill, if I'm not mistaken, I'm last night yeah. in in the in the Senate. I thought I saw someone break it down where only 11 Republicans voted no. Ugh. The usual suspects, you know, mm -hmm. Ted Cruz, Rand Paul. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna have to wait another two years to get rid of Mitch McConnell in the Senate to get this stuff actually humming. I, I, I don't know what it's going to take to get those guys to wake the hell up. You're going to need a super majority in the Republican Party <laughs> in the Senate before you see anything done, Tracy. That's what you're going to need. Okay, so it's always the goalpost moving continues. Yeah. I get it. But Rand did offer up some of a, a peek at what his plan would be. And it's, you know, the typical stuff that we always hear out of them, health savings accounts, buying across state lines. But he also offered up something. It's the first time I've heard this. And I know you and I have talked about this. Associations yes. allowing that to happen. So you and I could associate. And we could also incorporate other friends of ours and buy a group plan. That's how you drive costs down for individuals is allowing them to form groups. So this is not rocket surgery. It's, and they want to make it seem as if, oh, no, no, all too, these restrictions that are in place are necessary. Too much freedom, this. Tracy Connors. I guess so. But it's just wild to me that nobody asks these questions. And the other thing is, you know, this ridiculousness. You can stay on your parents' plan until you're 26. <laughs> well, what prevented that before? Right. You think the insurance company would, wouldn't sell a parent a policy that if they said, hey, I want a policy on my kid that's 26? Oh, and can we get a group rate? Well, the, and I know in certain plans, as long as you're in college, you're you'll you can continue to you used to be able to continue to stay on your parents' plan. Sure, I know things have changed. But this is all about allowing people to negotiate whatever contract they want to with a right. private business. That's how it should be. Eh, too much freedom. Too much freedom. I guess. Well, Obama did make a pronouncement that if somebody can put forward a plan to give it more people health insurance at a lower cost, I'll support it myself. I'll go out and campaign for it. Bullshit. Of course he won't. But I'd like to see somebody do it and then just play that clip on a loop. <laughs> Again, you know, I've said this over and over. Look at LASIK surgery. Mm -hmm. Look at, you know, plastic surgery. Those costs have either c come down or have have risen just with inflation and not had these ridiculous price increases because it's market driven. Mm -hmm. You can't slap your insurance card down and say, I want a boob job. It doesn't work that way. You have to shop around. The market determines what the price of a boob job is and not uh you, you just you, too often we see it you know people just don't view medical costs as real at least they mm -hmm. didn't before obamacare they would just slap their insurance card down and act like it was free no as soon as you bring a third party payer into the equation things change right <clears throat> I mean, it's it's a different setup than the student loans, but it's the same kind of idea. 
I mean, I remember getting my first credit card at 18 and just being like, oh, cool, free money. <laughs> right. And then you realize, oh, it's not. I have to pay it back and they're charging me 18% interest. <laughs> I better stop this crap real quick. Like I cut that out after I ran up $1,000 and I was like, what? Yeah. I have to pay more than my thousand. Well, that's kind of stupid. If I didn't have $1,000 today, I'm not going to have 1018 <laughs> next week. So <clears throat> these are the lessons you don't learn in school, though. Wait, they don't not teach it, you about that in school? No, not that anybody learns anything in school. Oh, I learned about Harvey Milk. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, yeah, important things like that. Oh, cool. Not about Who's paying that? a mortgage or anything like that. <laughs> Not about ba- nothing about balancing a checkbook. <laughs> oh, nothing about economics. No, nothing like and, that. You don't no. have any econ classes? Uh, no, actually, I did have an econ class. Yeah, so did I. But I, it was an elective. But then you, you know what I learned about in econ class? What? <sighs> cola. Like anyone has cola. Maybe back in the 80s they still did, but stuff like that. You're like, really? Oh. People still have cola? Okay. <laughs> uh. I thought you were talking about soda, and then it made no, me think about no. the Philly soda tax drama continues no, unabated. No, the c- cost of living adjustment. Yes. On your paycheck. I apologize. I should have explained what i was talking about but uh so what's going on have they uh has anybody burned down a cvs yet when they went to buy their 12 pack of mountain dew in philadelphia not yet uh, mm. a gentleman that owns i believe a hoagie joint which for those of you who don't live in the northeast that's the sandwiches that they sell at subway type sandwiches we call those hoagies or if you live in the city it's called a hoagie mm. <laughs> uh, a hoagie joint i believe in north philly said we're no longer selling soda. So they're just what b- bottled water? Yep, that's it. Because they don't want to deal with this BS because people are furious. And the mayor has come out and just said, "Look, you know, this will this will work out fine because what'll happen is some of these businesses will start absorbing some of the tax and not passing it along <laughs> and everything will be copacetic." Okay. And it's just like, oh my God. You see, people don't even understand that in the price of the soda you're paying for already, the tax is paid by the corporations that produce the soda. Right. No, they just just absorb it. Yeah, they're just going to hide it. (laughs) Well, that's why some of the businesses are just putting faith, you know, right under the soda exactly what you're going to pay for it at the register. And they're annoyed that that's happening because they wanted people just to pay at the register and then maybe get home and look at the receipt and say, what the hell? What? Wow, seventy cent tax on this. I mean, it's like the cigarettes. They put the price, they put the tax into the price of cigarettes now. Like yeah. I remember when I quit smoking, they were four dollars, and now I go in and they're anywhere between seven and twelve, depending on where you are. They're taxed at three hundred percent in some places, I believe. Three hundred, four hundred percent. It's unbelievable. I mean, I, I think I told that story about a month ago where I was walking through Manhattan and saw that like a pack of Parliaments was like eleven dollars. <laughs> yeah. Like really? <laughs> Parliaments? Eleven bucks? That was my brand. <laughs> Love those. But it's wild. But that's you know, they're showing you here's the tax. It's not like you pay it and it it showed up on the shelf for four dollars and then you give it to the clerk and they're like, Oh, that'll be eighteen ninety five. Three easy pays <laughs> six bucks. <laughs> wow. Oh, but of course, then they're moralizing. Well, you know, people really shouldn't drink soda. Yep, anyway. that's where it starts. But this is how they screw themselves, because that's what they did with the cigarettes, right? We're, oh, we'll tax cigarettes, and it'll go to pay for the children <laughs> and for health care. And so they base their budgets off of the current sale, not taking into account the fact that the sales would drop precipitously when they get cost prohibitive, because a lot of people that smoke are poor, and they have to budget their money. And now all those programs are running deficits, which should come as a shock to no one. But they should really be in charge of our health care, Tracy. They should be in charge of everything that we do. (laughs) I don't know why they're not. I don't know why anybody questions them. It's true. So uh, are we seeing any kind of significant 
backlash in Philadelphia, or is it just everybody just kind of shrugged their shoulders and like, well, it was passed, nothing we can do about it. There's a the fight goes on for sure. Because you have to imagine not everybody has ventured out to buy a soda yet. Yeah. But this is the one thing. I mean, when Obamacare passed, we knew it was going to suck. But it's, look how long it took for it to sink into to everybody's heads. They actually have to have a negative interaction with this and, and, and feel it in their wallet before you're going to get people annoyed. But what's fascinating to me is when you look at Obamacare and you see the negative impact it has had on the healthcare industry, you have folks that look at it and they have had a negative experience with Obamacare and they think to themselves, you know what we need? We just need the government to take the whole thing over. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, they believe okay. the, the BS that, oh, they'll be able to drive down prices of drugs. We'll be able to negotiate from a, you know, we'll have a plan that includes 330 million people <laughs> who wouldn't want to do business with that. And they believe all the hype that the, the socialized medicine systems that prevail in the rest of the industrial world are just fabulous. Yeah. They refuse to do things like Google NHS deaths. Nothing like and dying are, of dehydration in a hospital, Tracy. Connors. Right. Because it was the stuff. weekend and they were short staffed or spending hours circling in an ambulance so as not to be calculated into p- patient wait times. We what don't the- want to skew those figures. I mean, it's like the VA scandal. Yeah. We have our own national health care. We have our own or government run health care system in this country. It's called the Veterans Administration and it's horrendous. Oh, I think you're just being harsh. Probably. I'm just one of those people that hates everything the government does. <laughs> well, allegedly, uh, Donald Trump will be up on stage in three minutes, Tracy Connors. So, uh, should we just keep talking until we see the orange one hit the stage, or? I think so. Okay. I All didn't right. realize that Tillerson was being grilled today up on Capitol Hill. Because I see him on the split screen there. Uh, I didn't see it, but I saw somebody tweeted, our good friend... Uh, Michelle Ray, yes, Galt's girl, retweeted a reporter who's in the room. Apparently, a protester, because we've seen uh, quite a few protesters in the last couple of days during these confirmation hearings. Yesterday it was for uh, Sessions, Senator, Senator, yeah, and today uh, Tillerson. Somebody stood up and yelled, "Rex Tillerson, I reject you! I reject you!" My home was destroyed by Hurricane Sandy. Cool. So apparently, and, and Michelle uh, pointed out, Exxon has a weather machine. <laughs> of course they do. I would be more likely to believe that Al Gore and Leonardo DiCaprio have a weather machine mm. than I would that Exxon Mobil would do such a thing. They're actually into making money. Yeah, it's true. You know who has a weather machine? Russian prostitutes. Oh, this is true. They control the. They make it rain. The golden shower girls. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I honestly, I didn't think 2016 could be topped, but we're two, we're, we're we're two weeks into 2017, and we're having a national conversation about Russian prostitutes and golden showers. Bravo, 2017. It's amazing. And as best we can tell, that whole thing was compiled on 4chan, a message board, if you all aren't familiar with it. That's a little confusing when you first look at it. I still don't fully understand it, but they love pranking people. And they love being able to take something that they've cooked up on their little message board and get the press to to say it. I mean, it's like Baba Booey on a whole new level. (laughs) So this supposedly originates there as fan fiction of a sort. I guess they were, what would it look like? What could the FSB possibly have on Trump? Let's see. Let's see what we can get people to believe. And then after screaming about fake news, you would think that these people who, so no ability to be introspective or observe their own behavior would maybe have slowed down a little bit just to stay on the right side of the fake news line. But no, they can't help themselves. You know, it's it's the kind of thing I would expect from BuzzFeed. Yes. 
but you know, you know we've joked about CNN and how in the tank they were for uh in in the Hillary Clinton tank but um I never would have dreamed they would run with this story. I mean real I mean this I this is so ridiculous but hey maybe it's true Tracy. Maybe it's true. That, I guess so, but I mean that the headline was just unverified allegations <laughs> explosive and unverified we're gonna have to have a national conversation about reading comprehension because as soon as you read that in a headline you should read no further mm-hmm. that's what that's saying to you everything in here could be entirely made up continue reading only for your amusement well but i love did you see that ben smith buzzfeed ben himself uh, put out a a po- an email to his staff that somebody got a hold of. No, what did it say? Oh, it's lovely. As you have probably seen this evening, we published a secret dossier making explosive and unverified allegations about Donald Trump and Russia. I wanted to briefly explain to you how we made the decision to publish it. We published the dossier, which ben, uh, Ken Bensinger obtained through his characteristically ferocious reporting. <laughs> So that, as we wrote, quote, Americans can make up their own mind about allegations about the president-elect that have circulated at the highest levels of the U.S. government. Our presumption is to be transparent in our journalism and to share what we have with our readers. So this is all of them trying to hide behind kind of a WikiLeaks fig leaf here. Right. Because WikiLeaks is just like, okay, we get documents, we verify the documents, we put them out, and then let people read them and judge them for themselves. I like that model. This is, we get a document, we don't verify it, but we put it out because everybody's gossiping about it. <laughs> this is not, there's, there's nothing noble or good or, or any kind of uh, journalistic standard that should be lived up to in this. I think we have to ask this question. Okay. If a document surfaced of... Uh, allegations that Barack Obama had uh, a couple of male prostitutes peeing on themselves on the fifth hole of a golf course Mm -hmm. and there's no way to verify it would BuzzFeed have printed those allegations Mm. I don't know do they came were they uh, in dossier form for the purpose of this argument yes we'll (laughs) say that it was in dossier form Maybe, but I highly doubt it. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Well, 2016 was the year of the foam party. 2017 <laughs> is now the year of the golden shower. And we're only two weeks in. That's fantastic. This is unbelievable. And he's not even the president yet. Yeah, right? Look what this man yeah. has done. <laughs> he saved jobs in Indiana. He's brought... Uh, <laughs> The spotlight onto Ford, who, who was uh, going to send jobs to Mexico, and now they're bringing those jobs back into the country. And he's brought us a national conversation on golden showers. Bravo. Bravo, Mr. Trump. Yes, these are the people that were offended by the Billy Bush tape. <laughs> How could he say that? Oh, here, read this totally BS report that reads nothing like an intelligence report. <laughs> That says all the Russians have on Hillary is a couple taped conversations that are, amount to nothing. It's just her chatting with, you know, about yoga and Chelsea's wedding. Of course. Yep. Could they have, a, you know, we're waiting for Trump to appear. He's a few minutes late. I don't think they could squeeze any more American flags up on that stage, Tracy. Mm-mm. It's impossible. Maybe some will drop from the ceiling. <laughs> I wonder if there'll be a balloon drop today. Ooh. I don't know, but I just pictured him coming out with a t-shirt cannon. <laughs> oh, it's going to be... I mean, that's a... how ridiculous they make him. I'm noticing there's a table next to the podium on stage that's just covered with... Um, it looks like manila fo- dossiers. That's oh. the word. Oh. That's interesting. I, you know, he used to come out and do press conferences, and they would there would be Trump wine and Trump steaks. Uh, that was my favorite. <sighs> oh, good God. Well, there were other things I want. I, I wanted to tell you about my weekend. Oh, yeah? But I don't know if I should get into it because Trump's about ready to start speaking. 
Hmm. Well, can we? I'm going to speculate on something. Okay. With these dossiers, so I'm not sure if you saw this article or not that came out last week. I believe it, the first report was in the Washington Post, and this is making the left insane. There's an old House rule that I believe was passed at the end of the previous century, 1876. It was first proposed. And it's called the Holman Rule. And what it does is it allows Congress to put people into budgetary bills by name, federal employees, and cut their pay to a dollar. <laughs> so if you remember, <laughs> a couple weeks back, there were stories floating around that the Trump team was asking for the names of people at the Department of Energy who had attended climate change conferences and meetings and such. Yes. And then they got all up, the, you know, their hackles went up. We're not turning over these names to you. Not no how, not no way. And it's like, all right, we'll wait till the 20th or we'll wait till Perry's confirmed. And then he can get those out of you because he's going to be your boss and he's going to have access to all this stuff. But then I read this subsequently and I was like, oh, my God, is that what these lists are for? Are they going to just go through and add all these people's <laughs> names to the budget? And boom, dollar, dollar. <laughs> Maybe So that's what I'm going to think until I hear otherwise that that stack of um, papers that appear to be on the table next to Trump are that your salary is now a dollar files. It makes me so happy. <laughs> it's like all my crazy dreams are coming true. I mean, I don't think we're going to get to see your fired Fridays hosted mm. by President Trump live from the Oval. Or at least a tweet. Yeah. Yeah, but this is just so outstanding, and the Democrats are furious about this. Jim Johnson in the Department of whatever, <laughs> Department of Education, you're fired. No, you're not fired. Your salary's just a dollar. No, I, I was going with you're fired Fridays. That would be, oh, that would be right, a tweet. Right. 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 <laughs> It'd be great. Oh, it would be awesome. Oh. I kind of wanted a dressing down, though. I want everybody from the VA brought in there that oversaw the scandal where people were on waiting lists forever and Did dying and they get were fired? getting fired. Did anyone I, get fired? I don't I, I don't believe so. It's simply stunning. It's unbelievable. They got bonuses because, you know, they they proved they were efficient at hiding wait times. Yeah. So look at how smoothly this government health care thing runs. But you guys killed a bunch of people. Shut up. That's not written down anywhere. Never happened. La, 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 yeah. la, la. <laughs> Yep. Guess what? Your salary is now a dollar. <laughs> oh. You know, I should have known that Trump would not be on time because, let's face it, he, he doesn't have much respect for the press. Yeah. I let and those they've... assholes wait. <laughs> They've been screaming. He doesn't have a press conference. He doesn't have a. He has a press conference every day. It's called Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was doing those informal press conferences. That's what cracked me up. They're like, he hasn't had a press conference in what was one hundred and sixty some odd days. And it's like, well, yes. no, actually, he was doing press conferences during the the campaign. Yeah. Uh, they just weren't the the type of press conferences that you like. Yes, he was speaking on television every day. Yeah. And he had that little impromptu at Mar-a-Lago, or Mar-a-Lago, Mar-a-Lago, with uh, Don King <laughs> and his was... fist full of flags. <laughs> and he was wearing a giant Donald Trump button. <laughs> <laughs> On his, his denim jacket. bedazzled jacket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be great. Oh, it's so much fun. <sighs> You know, I would have loved to have had a President Paul yes. in a Republican Congress. That would have been fantastic. But if I can't have that, I'd rather have someone in there that makes it all... Just just shows everyone that the whole system is a complete joke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this has been my position for, what, a year and a half? Yeah. The whole thing's a crooked joke. Why not just hand it over to a clown? <laughs> then maybe we can start questioning the integrity of the entire system and the necessity of the system. And now the left seems on board with that. Before, it was like, oh, we wish Obama could have dictatorial powers. Now they're like, oh, my God, Trump's a dictator. 
<laughs> you idiot. Oh, God. Oh, God. People are going to be rounded up and sent off the camps. Well, that's what Rachel Maddow was concerned with. Unbelievable. I don't even... What does that look like in her mind? She's the just going to... The white van's going to creep Takes her up to the Amtrak it. station and puts her on one of those trains that don't have proper braking mechanisms. <laughs> hey, Rachel, you're never getting to the camp, sweetheart. They're putting you on a government-run train. She's worried about the conversion camp. Oh, yeah. yeah that's what she's worried about. The white van's going to creep up from behind. And then Mike Pence himself runs that conversion therapy <laughs> with right. Michelle Bachman's husband. We that, all know this. That van also has a uh, a uterus tagger. <laughs> it'll suck out every iud because those are no longer allowed oh fox news right now has a split screen of tillerson tillerson and donald trump still no trump people are waiting no, can't wait i see the, the the most dangerous man in america though there in the background steve bannon caught a caught a little glimpse oh he's there that must mean trump's close of course he is well, he's a behind-the-scenes cat. I didn't know that he actually would show his face. Well, he was... You can't see him anymore, can you? No, I, I can't. There you go. He just disappears, uh, he's but... Uh, slippery. He's a slippery one, that Steve Bannon. Jared Kushner's right out front, and everybody's mad that he's not going to be advising his father-in-law and taking no salary to do such. And yeah. I love these... Cries of nepotism from the people who had no problem whatsoever with Hillary saying, I'm going to get Bill to be in charge of the economy. Oh, and, you know, Robert Kennedy. Yeah. Being the well, attorney the general for, you know, President Kennedy. That was OK. Well, this is the nepotism laws came into place after that. I yeah, know but, that might but, shock you. I, I, but the, you don't hear anyone complaining about that. No. I mean, there were complaints. On the left. Aren't. Right. Right. But, yeah, God forbid Jared Kushner come in and act as an unpaid advisor. But Bill would have set up an entire office to run the economy out of the White House and taken a salary and had a full staff. And there's nothing wrong with that, though. That's okay. That's all right. Because a woman can't possibly run the economy without her husband helping. <laughs> Math is hard, Tracy. It is. <laughs> We're stronger together, you know. That's true. So I wonder how much longer Bill Clinton, or Bill Clinton, uh, Donald Trump is going to make the press wait. I don't know. I was checking his Twitter, to, or I should go on a Facebook, too. Maybe he's just doing it, a Facebook Live press conference and punking them all. <laughs> so I wonder, I wonder who he will have kick uh, this conference off. Because, you, you know, sometimes he'll have people come up, and it's not him. <laughs> to kick the whole bad boy off if it'll be uh <laughs> who 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 could he possibly have up there that would piss off everybody the press ooh. Ooh. at this point putin yeah have putin walk out there that'd be good anthony uh, weiner <laughs> oh have him walk out oh god oh well, here he the, comes it, is it oh yeah you're right i see the the golden glow. <laughs> well, do you want to suspend our broadcast for now, our podcast, until after the... Oh, you were right. It looks like he's going to let someone else talk first. Oh, uh, see? This is when uh, Duarte is going to drop in from his helicopter that he uses to murder drug dealers normally, but just to stop by and warm up the podium for good old... Who is that up there? Presidente. That's Sean Spicer. Okay. Boy, someone Soon really should secretary. get... Sean Spicer, a phone book to stand on. Yeah, or seven. <laughs> All right, well, let's take a break, and then maybe we'll talk after the press conference. Sure. Okay. Uh, more of the Enough Already podcast right after this. <laughs> Enough Already! And we're back. We have just watched the... Trump press conference from Trump Tower. Tracy Connors, what an amazing performance. Oh, absolutely hilarious. Uh, he had a stack of papers that had to do with him uh, divesting himself from Trump Inc. What is, what's the official name of Trump's business? Trump Corporation, I believe, Trump is how that attorney chick referred to it. Uh, okay, so he went over that, and that's really when the news conference 
um, really took a dive because none of the reporters they they pretended for weeks that this news conference was going to be about that and they were really interested in that but at the end of the day they wanted to ask more questions about the Russian hacking and Trump uh, watching golden showers and they care about (laughs) his business interests and if there would be a conflict of interest between being president of the United States and running his company so once again it shows that the media's priorities are completely out of whack but hey or they just lie about their priorities. That's true. But uh, had to have been asked at least five times whether he believed that the Russians were responsible for hacking the DNC, which he said, I think it was Russia, but then pointed out correctly that the media didn't seem to care about China hacking the United States government, getting, what, what was it, 21,000? Oh, it, millions, I believe, because or, or it was me, retired government yeah. employees as well. I, yeah. 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 Names. Um, that was the OPM hack of 2015, I want to say, that happened. Maybe it was 2016. Barely reported. Yep. Because it had nothing to do with uh, the election, the DNC giving Hillary Clinton excuses as to why she lost the election. And, of course, it was embarrassing to the Obama administration. So we didn't hear anything about Right, that. even though that you're talking about everybody's personnel files including who knows what kind of financial information because we all have to have those social security numbers which is what you need to set up oh fake identities and all those kind of fun things but yeah no 20 million of those records getting compromised that's a 24-hour story if that right but i think the highlight of the trump press conference (laughs) was his comments uh he, he gave us his opinion of buzzfeed what, what did oh, he call BuzzFeed? So beautiful. A failing pile of garbage. <laughs> because they are the ones that reported on this fake story, put it out the 35-page dossier. And CNN also reported on the story, but they only linked to BuzzFeed's report and didn't include in their own report a link to the 35 pages. But you have, so you have to file two links to get to the 35 pages, which means in their estimation, their hands are clean of all of this. And Trump lumped them in together after calling BuzzFeed a failing pile of garbage. (laughs) There was much consternation from the peanut gallery and shouts came out. Will you let us ask a question? We're, you know, you're calling us out and demeaning us, blah, 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 blah. And Trump responded with, uh, you are fake news. And it was difficult to tell while you're watching on television who he exactly was speaking to. We've come to find out it was Jim Acosta of CNN who then started whining loud enough that all the (laughs) the microphones picked it up. (laughs) Uh, Mr. President, that's not appropriate. Okay, that'll shut him down. That's what that's how you get to Trump telling him what he's saying is inappropriate. I have flashbacks immediately to that anchor babies press conference. (laughs) You can't say that. Oh, okay. thanks. What can I say? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say Anchor Baby. So CNN is very, very butthurt at the moment. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. It's so funny. He did. Uh, they did have some serious questions that were not Russia involved about repealing and replacing Obamacare, which he says we'll see happen almost simultaneously. It could be in the same hour, fingers. Could be in the same day. He wouldn't commit to anything. He kept saying, we have to wait until our secretary gets approved. Didn't say which secretary, so we can only assume he's talking about Tom Price getting approved as secretary of HHS. And then at what time we will, the uh, wonderful repeal and replace bill that's brilliant and beautiful and the smartest thing you've ever seen will be revealed to the American American public. Um, There was a question about the wall and Mexico paying for it. You know, President-elect Trump informed us that Mexico will indeed be paying for this wall, but he expects those negotiations to take too long, and he'd like to get started right away building it, so we'll negotiate some sort of reimbursement schedule or whatnot with the Mexicans, so they will indeed be paying for the wall. And we should be getting uh, the name that he's going to put forward for the Supreme Court vacancy within the first two weeks of him taking office. All in all, a very entertaining, sometimes <laughs> cringeworthy news conference. Uh, yes. So there's that. And we really, it's going to be interesting to see moving forward 
how much more they're going to try to uh, legitimize this dossier in the mainstream media. Um, I, I think at this point they've done a very good job. This is going to be something that's going to stick with the Trump administration for as long as it is in office. Golden showers, it's going to be a thing. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe his birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, I guess at the end of the day, um, if they were looking to further delegitimize the Trump administration, uh, I guess mission accomplished by BuzzFeed and CNN. I, I, I love how CNN is trying to act like it is above the fray. Mm-hmm. When. We didn't publish those 35 pages that were absolutely ridiculous, but we did entice you to check them out and pointed you right at the BuzzFeed article where they were contained. But we knew it was bullshit. But in case you wanted to see it, <laughs> here it is. I just, I can't believe how myopic the press becomes about things that are like this. So we have Spicer come out, introduce Trump, shoot this down. Then Pence come out, shoot the story down. Then Trump, and we have to keep talking about this story. All right. But we want to see, we want him di- fully divested from these things. And we're going to talk about the emoluments clause ad nauseum because that's really important to us. But then we're going to move back right back to golden showers and Putin. <laughs> you fake news. Your fake news. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be a fun, fun, oh, yeah. fun, fun. And I assume we're going to hear how unpresidential he's still being and those kind of things. Doesn't bother me at all. I'd rather laugh at these press conferences than just eye roll and be annoyed. CNN's reporter, they're, they're going to him right now who looks butthurt, looks looks very disappointed that he wasn't called on in the press conference and was actually <laughs> called out at yes we deserve to have a question now if you're going to be mean to us no you don't sit down it was almost again the other flashback that comes to mind is when he threw jorge ramos out of that press conference <laughs> early on as well CNN, you're being very rude cnn legitimized the story absolutely it, it, it took a story from a shitty website. Yeah. Cat gifts and Yeah. And legitimized it. Mm-hmm. And now they're acting as though they don't have uh any responsibility in the story. They're like I said, they're above the fray here. They really uh um had nothing to do with it. You know, Jake Tapper was on acting like, you know, I just oh, it's just not true. We didn't report on this. It's like, well, you, you legitimize the story. Yeah. We're talking about it. You reported on it, sir. But okay. Yeah. Here's the, the CNN article that he's saying does not report on it from the article. CNN has reviewed a 35-page compilation of the memos from which the two-page synopsis was drawn. This is the two pages that apparently were shown to Obama and Trump during their briefings. The memos have since been published by BuzzFeed, hyperlinked. <laughs> The memos originated as op- opposition research, first commissioned by anti-Trump Republicans and later by Democrats. At this point, CNN is not reporting on the details of the memos as it is not independently corroborated the specific allegations. But see the hyperlink if you want to find out more about what's in them. I mean, I added that last piece, but that's that's them keeping their hands clean in their minds. Well, whatever gets you through the day, I guess. It's just stunning. They have no idea what to do. And this is truly, truly pathetic. We want them divested fully. Like, that's all we care about. Where is this? I mean, I've heard the word emolument so many damn times in the last month that you would have thought everybody's word of the day calendar got stuck on that. Wow. But nope, nope, nope. We don't care. That's what that pile of documents was because they're very good at the visual theater game in this administration. Nope. Ivanka's out, too, in case anybody cares about that. And the the two sons, the older ones, are going to be running the organization without any input from Trump. Oh, and, and what's amazing to me when we were watching the CNN coverage after the news conference, does Wolf Blitzer speak when Jake <laughs> Tapper is next to him? Because apparently he's just completely... Um, he clams up, and now the quote, CNN's decision to publish care... Oh, I can't. Damn it. 
Yeah. Oh, sorry. They're, they're, again, they're 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 claiming. Well, CNN didn't report it. Well, you hyperlinked it. You said, yeah. You said here you go. Yeah. Take a look at it over at BuzzFeed if you want to know what's in it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. We haven't been able to substantiate it, but and it goes back to what I read. Ben Smith had written to his employees. It was just like, well, these are unverified things, but. In order to be transparent and show everyone what everyone's talking about, we'll show you this garbage that we fell for. I mean, I I can't even believe that they bothered to investigate those claims. Well, here's what's so insulting about Jake Tapper's opinion uh, or his his defense. He said, I don't blame President-elect Trump for being upset about what BuzzFeed did. And I'm paraphrasing here. uh, BuzzFeed was irresponsible in posting it and it makes journalism harder for all of us when they did it. Well, you hyperlink the goddamn thing. Right. How, how, how can you sit there and, and, and have that attitude or act like you have that attitude when you, you hyperlinked it. Mm hmm. Giving it credibility. S- yes. You're see freaking NN. But you can't say we give this no credibility, but here it is. <laughs> Judge for yourselves. Wow. And how am I supposed to judge for myself? Oh, you're supposed to read it and you're supposed to laugh uproariously because right. it's I've, so I've, absurd. I mean, honestly, oh, we we want the American people to read this dossier and judge for themselves. Judge yeah. for myself what? <laughs> really? That you guys are so dumb that you fell for this. <sighs> I mean, but you want the American the American people are now intelligence experts? Mhm. Sure we are. I mean, it's not as fancy pants as the the one with the infographics and the hoodied hackers from Russia breaking into everything. Wow. All right. Um, So that was the Trump press conference. And we're nine days away from his presidency actually beginning. And it's already this much fun. I don't know, Fingers, maybe we should work on some fan fiction ourselves and see who can get to bite. (laughs) I mean, they're they're just going with the hooker angle. We could go so much further with this. We know Podesta has a thing for aliens. Maybe we get him to bite on something and spread it around. Because even though those people should have absolutely no influence anymore whatsoever, you know they still will. Mm. Well, uh, I'm sure Milani is a Russian spy. Oh, yeah. just Oh, that's a good one. We just throw that out there. Yeah. I don't even think she's a real person. I think she's a fembot. (laughs) She's a rogue nuke, you know. Oh. Steaming pile. Oh, I'm adding the steaming pile of garbage. Oh. You want to hear about my weekend briefly? Yeah. I I think this is entertaining because it's completely embarrassing. Uh, I hurt my thigh. (laughs) Are you suing Suzanne Summers? Uh, Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Saturday night, I met uh, my brother-in-law. He lives in Michigan. Mm-hmm. I live in Indianapolis. Met him halfway in South Bend, Indiana, to watch the Detroit Lions get their asses kicked in the playoffs. Um, we started drinking at three o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. How are you planning on getting home from this? Oh, got a hotel room up in. South oh, okay, Bend. good. Yeah. Good. No, no, no. I was responsible. Ubers. Um, and, uh, got a hotel room. Okay. So we started at three o'clock and I went from Jim Beam to beer, which is mm-hmm. something I don't normally do, but we went to a sports bar to watch the game. Uh, the game was at eight thirty. I don't remember anything about the second half of the football game. Mm-hmm. We went to two bars after that. I don't remember anything. The last bar we left, um, apparently, I'm told, we walked to a gas station and got oh. snacks. I woke up the next morning. My leg hurt. Like my <laughs> thigh. It hurts. Real, It's really bad, Tracy. And I didn't have a cell phone. My cell phone was gone. Uh-huh. Um, the desk in the hotel room had, f- like, glazed sugar from, like, a donut. 
Mm-hmm. And so, this, you're on the Atkins diet currently, is that correct? Uh, you may have fallen off the wagon. Uh, All right. It was a good run while it lasted. <laughs> Lost a pound and a half. Um, <laughs> there's, there's, there, so there's donut sugar all over the desk in an empty gas station donut bag and a, I'd say, uh, half a bottle of orange soda sitting on the desk oh. next to a Jim Beam and diet that I had made for myself that I didn't drink. Don't remember any of this. So I'm looking wow. around, scrambling, looking for my phone, can't find my phone. Um, looked in my jeans pocket, had a, a, a cigarette lighter. Oh. In my jeans. Apparently, I smoked. Interesting. Don't remember that. So did the, um, where's my iPhone? Mm-hmm. Turns out my iPhone was on the hotel property buried under three inches of snow oh wow and for by some miracle it was still working huh because usually i don't know about you but i've had my iphone out with my iphone 5 i've got an iphone 6 now but i remember taking my daughter out trick-or-treating and it was like 35 degrees outside and the damn thing shut down because it was too cold oh i've only ever had mine get too hot oh well, this was buried under three inches of snow. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, right next to where I fell. Oh, that explains the leg. Yeah. Was there a finger-sized imprint in the snow? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So apparently, I fell, dropped my cell phone, got back up, was able to pick up my donuts and pop, and walk back to the hotel room. I'm a 45-year-old adult, Tracy Connors. I've been told this before. I have my doubts. Ever been? Uh, when's the last time you've been blackout drunk? Oh, good lord! Probably Vegas. <laughs> you know what? The last time for me was Vegas. When, yep. when, when I woke up and had five people's room service in my room. Well, I've never had incidents like what you're describing ever happen. They're pieces that I that go missing. Yeah. But normally, if somebody tells me. This is what happened. Then it comes back. But long swaths of complete non-memory. The only time that ever happened to me involved Ambien. Mm. And so that was a one-time deal. Never to be done again. Because <laughs> it's terrifying. My roommates buried me under everything that was in on coffee tables and, and shelves and stuff like this in our living room. So there's photographs of this. Wow. I fell asleep on the couch in the living room. And woke up in my bed the next morning and had no idea that any of that had gone on. That's fun. Yeah, not so much. And I would never have believed it if there hadn't been photographic evidence. Oh, but. that's the worst. Well, it's fine. They're not well, on the internet or anything. And I, I'm told I did karaoke. Don't remember it. Wow. I vaguely, it, it's like if you said to me, did you go to a bar later? I know I was somewhere. Mm -hmm. That wasn't my hotel room, but I don't remember these bars, and I don't remember I I don't remember going to a gas station, and I don't remember falling down. I don't remember any of it, but mm -hmm. I fell, and I hurt my thigh to where I've got a nice limp going. Mm -hmm. and I don't even know how you hurt your thigh in a fall. There's no bruise. Yeah, I just like pulled my muscle or something. Yes. You're you talking about the front or the back? Yeah, the front. It wasn't It's not a hammy. Um, it's a quad. But I can't. Uh, can you imagine? I mean, I, I don't know what it would have. I don't know what I would have done without find my iPhone. There's no way yeah. I would have found the damn thing. No. Somebody just would have stumbled across it. You know, in the <laughs> during the spring thaw, I would have been in the water. <laughs> oh man. So well, thank you for sharing with the class. Yeah, I thought it was kind of funny. Yeah, I agree. Well, anything else you want to talk about before we wrap this up? Nah, I think we've talked enough. Yeah. Okay, where can everyone find the Enough Already podcast? You can find us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Facebook, and at enoughalreadypodcast.com. Music for the Enough Already podcast is provided to us courtesy of Yo Pauly. 
music.com. Follow me on Twitter at Fingers Malloy. Follow Tracy on Twitter at Tracy L. Connors. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for listening. We will be back next week with an all-new Enough Already podcast.